Hey class, happy Thursday. Um, hope you're all doing well. I see a lot of you are already turning in work, so awesome. Again, my puppy Finn wants to say hi. Finn, say hi. Finn. I think he found a stick. He's eating. Anyways, we're going to continue a discussion on phylogeny. So this week's new topic is phylogeny, representing evolutionary relationships. And I want to, again, thank evolution.berkeley.edu go bears best university in the world okay they have a, this this is an awesome website and i use um, the images from it to help make this video all right so our objectives this week we want to visualize evolutionary relationships using cladograms and analyze those relationships using a cladogram okay in a previous video i made i walked through how to read a cladogram and in this video we are going to make a simple cladogram and the this video is for one question on your taxonomy practice where I have you making a cladogram okay so I'm not going to go through how to make this but I'm going to give you a different example that you can hopefully use to make this question easier all right, so when we're making a cladogram, which is a diagram showing evolutionary relationships of organisms, I want to keep two ideas in mind. One, parsimony, and two, shared derived characteristics. These two ideas will help me make my cladogram. Now, um, in the previous video, I talked about shared derived characteristics, and these are homologous structures shared by a clade. So in a cladogram, a clade is your ancestral species and all of its descendants. So in this case, in this image, the four limbs is a homologous structure. It is a shared derived characteristic. Okay, and I use shared derived characteristics to create my cladogram, to create those branches you see in a cladogram. Now, when we're looking at shared derived characteristics and we determine where do we put what shared derived characteristic, you want to keep in mind parsimony. And parsimony is this idea that the simplest possible possible explanation is best. Okay? Okay. Keep it simple. When you're making a cladogram, make the simplest possible cladogram you can make with all the information. Okay? You don't want things evolving two times if you can help it. Now, if we look at two possible cladograms, hypothesis one, hypothesis two, Remember, at the end of the day, cladograms are scientific explanations, the best scientific explanation we can make. Since we have not seen these evolutionary events happen, we are using the evidence of evolution we have, homologous structures, DNA, evidence. So all the evidence we talked about, using the fossil record to construct this cladogram. So there are two hypotheses here, one and two, and they're mostly identical except for one difference. The fish, the ray fin fish, is put in two in different spots with hypothesis one, cladogram one, and cladogram two. Okay, in cladogram one, the ray fin fish has been placed so that this bony skeleton evolved one time. It is the shared derived characteristic popped up once. Okay, and then from here, the ray fin population diverged, and then another population diverged and created the amphibians and reptiles and birds and mammals we know today. Now, the other example, the ray fin fish was put with sharks. Um, visually, it makes sense. Sharks and fish, ray fin fish, they're both fish. It would make sense to put them together. But in this example, the shared derived characteristic of a bony skeleton popped up twice. We had to put it in two times to create this cladogram. Now, visually, this might make sense, but from parsimony, from the simplest possible explanation using our evidence, this one, let's cross out two, number one is best because it is the simplest cladogram we can make. Okay, and this cladogram on the right that I crossed out, I had to add one extra step. I don't need to do that. Okay, is it possible that this was actually the case, that a bony skeleton evolved twice? Yeah, it's possible. Now, this hypothesis makes sense. It's more logical that the bony skeleton evolved once in a population, and then from there it has been modified over time. 
Now, when we make a cladogram, um, in, this, in, in this video's example, I'm going to use five species that were recently found. The blue circle, the green horn, the red eye, the yellow mouth, and the blue cross eye. All right. Now, forgive me. My puppy is barking, and I don't know what. Hey, stop it. Be nice. Say hi to the camera. Oh, I guess he's filming the video with me for a little bit. All right, so when we start out, I want to create um, a cladogram. I'm going to use a baseline, and I first want to find one shared derived character characteristic for all of my species. So if I flip back to my five species, if I look at the characteristics, blue circle is shared with all of them. That is one shared derived characteristic for all five species. So at the root of my cladogram, I'm going to put blue circle as my shared derived characteristic. And then I'm going to have one species diverge, one population diverge, which will lead to the modern day blue circle species. Now next, I look at the remaining four and I want to find a shared derived characteristic. And in this case, the red eyes are shared by all four. So it's likely that that was the next shared derived characteristic to evolve in my cladogram. So this population evolved the red eye and it speciated one population formed modern day red eye and then the other population formed the other three species. All right, so then those other three species, okay, one, two, three, I look at them and I see yellow mouths are a shared derived characteristic. So on my cladogram, I'm going to put yellow mouths, write it in as my shared derived characteristic. And then I'm going to show one population diverging. That's the modern day, that forms the modern day yellow mouth species. Let's go back. I have two species left. And I look at them. So green horns, that's the next shared derived characteristic. So on my cladogram, I'm going to write in green horn on my baseline as my shared derived characteristic, and then show a population diverging, leading to the modern day species. And to wrap it up, I have this one with the red cross, or the blue cross, I mean, in its eye. So blue X eyes as the last shared derived characteristic. All right, that is how you make a simple cladogram. Hopefully that helps you answer the question where I have you make a cladogram in your taxonomy practice. Use this video to help guide you in making that cladogram. All right, have a great Thursday. Stay safe, wash your hands, okay? Bye.